thing because you tell me each time I shake hands with you, thank you for having designed the airplane. But for me, it's the other way around. I thank you for having built it. It's uh, not only a very special experience for yourself, but it's also an experience with others together. And uh, that is a beauty with EAA who makes it possible that we are all here together. And uh, I would like, I don't want to hold Paul up very long because he has many other people to say hello to. I want to thank Paul as well as Tom that he isn't here. And it was really very, very nice each time we were at Oshkosh at the show. He came and said, shake, shook hand with us and said hello. The first time I came here, it was in 1973. And uh, at that time, my prototype was still registered with the French registration. Later on, that has changed. And in the two first uh, visits I made to Oshkosh, of course, I flew the airplane and I stayed overnight at Steve Whitman's place, who just lived on the other side of the airport. So I really like to thank Paul for having done all those things because without EAA, we wouldn't be here. So... <laughs> and uh, in order to thank Paul for all he has done, I want to give him my book, and there is a dedication in it, it's nothing special. He knows all those things, but uh, I want to give him one. everything perfect. <laughs> we can put it over here, Chris. Uh, what I would like to say. Talk like Chris. <laughs> My dad come from the old country. Chris, I known you for many years as an aviation enthusiast. You're interested in the same thing I had, had in forming this organization. People ask me why did I, we, my wife, form, form this organization. In high school, I was a very poor student. My high school teacher, Mr. Omar F. Tangney told me one day, he was an ancient history teacher, and he says, Paul Howard, I was known by the name of Howard then. And uh, that's my middle name, but my mother, from being from Arkansas, changed it, and when I got in the service, and it's kind of mixed up. He said, uh, you're not doing very good in your work. I have an old damaged Waco glider. And he uh, gave me that glider and sixty-seven dollars to buy material. That's pretty much money for a teacher back in 1937. That was my start, and that's why uh, I love teachers and those that love each other. I found and I formed the organization. 
I never expected ever it to be this big. I have a natural ability to love everyone, even though sometimes it's challenging. <laughs> And uh, I called together a small group uh, back in 1953 after I got back from flying in Korea. Although I had the idea before then, it was building airplanes. And I thought if I could put together in this wonderful country a group of men and women, take the freedoms that we have and hand in mind to be creative for aviation. That's a small part, but it must be a family that loves each other, high standards, and togetherness. You'll know everything is like a park here. You'll notice something that's changed because of the able to go down and on the flight line, you see Cessna and all these fine companies that support us. They have gardens around their facilities. Because that is the standards of your organization. In the early days, uh, with the Department of Commerce, uh, they taught me a lot, the fellows back in the beginning, 1953. They were like the FAA of today. The fellows back then were like us. They liked to load airplanes. They liked creativeness. I got a lot of help from those. The CAA and the FAA later. To, to help the home built movement. In my work in Washington, I never was demanding. I never used your organization and you got to do this. We're a big outfit. All my recommendations, I talk to the key people personally. What do you think? My idea. I got a lot of help. A lot of recommendations, even within FAA or CAA, or some would not always agree with the FAA, the people within your own departments. And we had Charlie Becker, not Charlie Becker, but uh, Chuck and some others in FA, uh, CA and FA that really helped me. And uh, you'll find even today, FA is much more understanding even with the many new people. In forming chapters, my idea was bringing together local communities, those who love each other and love airplanes, bring their children, wives, whole family together like you all had. We had our early fly-ins in 1953, nothing like this. Rockford, for many years, we left Rockford because it became a politi political situation where the airport authority had their own authority in the city. And there as they got into a discussion that if, each, uh, if the airport don't give in, we aren't going to help you out. And vice versa. And the airport said, well, we won't have you here. So I talked to our directors and I said, gentlemen, we have no place to go. I don't deal with politicians that way. So we left. It was pretty sad for Rockford to even talk about it, but it worked out eventually for them better with the airport. Came here, the community accepted us. Our first year was 1970. It was a cornfield out in front of the old tower. And he said to our members locally and our board of directors, it has to meet my standards, and we won't have one until we do. And uh, so much more to this story. The clean was a cornfield in spring. 
and uh, one of my sergeants uh, from my unit, and I came up here and I said to Val, I said, your job is to find a grader, and I'll find a tractor to clean the land. And Val came back after a few visits, found a grader with a hitch on it for two horses. I <laughs> <laughs> went over across the street over here, chief equipment, who sold tractors and so forth. And I went in to see if I could borrow a tractor to pull the grader. And we got to talk, and he didn't know anything about the EA. And, and he said, um, well, you're did you ever fly in service? I said, yes, I did. He said, well, I flew P-47s. He said, I did too. We had tractors for a few years pulling the old grader with the big wheels on each side. We cut the tongue off, made a short hitch, hooked it on. We changed, raised and lowered the blades with a rope around. Our neck, which, like a horse, which we're the curve. <laughs> but I'm so pleased. Look what you all own. This all belongs to you. The building up here, your headquarters, it's all paid for. I would never accept any government money. But, than anyone else, I guess. I retired as president, so-called. I was chairman of the board, which really isn't uh, anything. I work every day in uh, several offices at home. I one here. My wife says to me, why do you do this? Because I love you all. I got her support, my daughter, my granddaughter, and you've all built this, make aviation better, but it's not aviation, it's making your own lives better. If you only could ride with me that little red one, which is not the most comfortable thing, <laughs> I'll, I'll be 90 in a couple months. Interesting story. I thought you, I just talked to Augie about it. Bought a headstone with 1100 and some dollars. <laughs> Put it in. That's where we're, where we're going to be buried. I didn't know there's laws about that. <laughs> so when that got to the attention of the community, it was presented to the county supervisors. The discussion was turned down. I didn't realize you had to have state laws, you had to have a cemetery committee and all that. So I tried to comply with all the uh, requests. It was presented on my behalf in Audrey's and went before the county board, and it ended up where one fellow said, if Paul Pogorizny and his wife brings this much money into this community, we could even have one on a golf course. 